Is it possible for a VPN to be hacked? Yeah. Is it likely that your VPN will be hacked? Not really. Do you want to stick around and find out exactly how and why? I sure hope so, because I've prepared a whole bunch of information on the five main ways in which a VPN can be compromised and how they work. And in some of those cases, there are some steps you can take to make sure it doesn't happen to you. Still with me? Yes. In that case, I'm Callum, and you're watching Top 10 VPN. Let's get started. To understand how a VPN could be hacked, let's take a look at the steps in the process of using one to identify potential weak points. First, you sign up for a service and download and install the software. The VPN software then uses a specific protocol and cipher to safely connect your device to a remote server and encrypt the data traveling to it. Upon reaching that server, the data is then decrypted and it connects to the website or service you're looking for on your behalf. The website sends the data you requested back to that VPN server, which then re-encrypts it and sends it onto your device where the VPN client then de-encrypts it and you receive everything as normal. So, presuming that you have in fact downloaded a legitimate VPN service from a respectable VPN provider, here are the five ways in which someone could hack your VPN. Number one, through a vulnerable protocol. While inherently complex things at heart, just think of a protocol as a set of rules that your VPN follows to create a connection between your device and the VPN server. You'll have seen them in app as there's usually a choice available. OpenVPN and WireGuard are two examples of popular VPN protocols. And like almost anything, some VPN protocols are better and more secure than others. Of course, there's not much you yourself can do to improve upon the strength of a VPN protocol, but you should at least make sure that you're picking one which is modern, up to date and secure. Generally speaking, that means either OpenVPN or WireGuard, or in some instances, the protocol the VPN has developed itself, like NordLinks for NordVPN or Lightway for ExpressVPN. What you shouldn't use is something like PPTP, which at this point in time is now easily hacked. Number two, through cryptographic attacks. This kind of goes hand in hand with the protocol. All VPN protocols also use an encryption cipher, a fancy name for the method by which it takes all of your data and then scrambles it all up and makes it impossible to read. Just like protocols, they all have fairly catchy and kind of weird names like AES and ChaCha20, and there's a chance nowadays that you won't even be able to pick your encryption cipher as a lot of VPNs just default to whatever is strongest available for your chosen protocol. However, if you ever see something like a choice between AES128 and AES256, then you should really just pick the bigger number. That number refers to the encryption key, which is the value that's used to either scramble or unscramble your data. Again, keeping it simple, you don't need to worry about what that really means. Just know that the larger number means better security and there's no impact on your connection speeds. The only real hacking risk here is if an outdated cipher is being used. Older, weaker ciphers take less time to crack and a cracked cipher means your data becomes legible again. Use a modern cipher recommended by your VPN and you'll be fine. They're borderline uncrackable. Number three, by stealing encryption keys. Yes, most modern encryption keys would take literally millions of years for a hacker to brute force their way through, even with top-of-the-line equipment, but they could just steal them instead. That's easier said than done, though, so there's no need to panic just yet. These keys aren't just left out in the open. Uh, good VPNs will encapsulate them, usually by using a technology known as perfect forward secrecy. Perfect forward secrecy uses unique symmetric keys for every session. What that means is that your client and the VPN server both generate a unique key, and they'll only shake hands and exchange data if keys are present and correct at both ends. Those keys are never transferred over your connection, so there's no risk of them being intercepted. And under perfect forward secrecy, keys are unique to each VPN session, so even if this hypothetical super hacker were to somehow get their hands on them, then they would only be able to get one session's worth of your data. Complicated, but reassuring, I think. Number four, by compromising a VPN server. Moving along the chain of events, the next stop is the VPN server that your VPN is communicating with. If a hacker can't attack your VPN connection, they could try attacking the server instead. This can happen either remotely or locally. If a server is improperly configured, a hacker would theoretically be able to see all information stored on it and passing through it in real time. And this does happen. For example, back in 2018, NordVPN, that NordVPN, suffered a server breach because a third-party company it was renting servers from screwed up. In the time since, NordVPN now owns all of the servers it uses in its network to prevent it from happening again. And NordVPN is, of course, far from the only VPN this has happened to. The best way to protect yourself from it is by doing a little research, with the help of top10vpn.com, I'd recommend, and using a VPN that owns its entire server network. Also, if you see a server network described as physical or RAM only, that means it is incapable of storing user data on a hard drive, which makes it that much harder to hack. And we really like seeing that from VPN services. Number five through IP, DNS, or WebRTC leaks. 
This last one isn't technically hacking, but it does involve exploiting a potential weakness in your VPN. Sometimes VPNs leak, which means that personal data relating to the user escapes the encrypted VPN tunnel and becomes visible. This will usually be your geolocation, your DNS requests, or worst of all, your IP address. We've actually made a whole video on the various types of VPN leaks and how they occur, and how they can be stopped if you want to learn more. In brief though, if a snooper were to be monitoring your connection and your VPN unexpectedly failed, and maybe the kill switch didn't work, or it's not configured to handle IPv6 addresses properly, or your computer interferes with the DNS routing, then they would be able to see some very personal information without even really needing to do anything else at all. How'd you stop this? How? You guessed it. You pick a good VPN. Good VPNs don't leak. Anything. Ever. It's that simple. Or you can check out the video I just mentioned for advice on fixing those leaks. It's like I said, VPNs are hackable, but there's a reason you don't hear about it very often, and that's because it's really, really difficult to do so. There absolutely are occasional breaches, especially when it comes to the more shady, less reputable free VPNs which are all over the iOS and Android app stores. Be smart and be sensible and pick a reputable premium VPN service to give yourself the best possible odds. You could even consult some of the unbiased reviews backed up by years of dedicated expert testing on top10vpn.com if you like. You could also give this video a like if you'd care to support the channel. Stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one.